want them threatening you? Because obviously, that's where we need to look closer. Yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't the uh, story that, of course, Larry Sinclair uh, advanced about his, um, at least his bisexuality. It, it, what I was warned off on was the, uh, the, the background of Obama in Indonesia uh, with the Central intelligence agency this is the one thing that they can't handle at the white house reason being is they can handle this birth certificate story they basically run hawaii uh neil abercrombie's the governor he he knew uh uh, uh stanley ann dunham obama's mother he, you know he knew the family uh, uh so they, they can, and he's governor of hawaii now so of course he's in a position to uh tamp anything down on that front but i i always thought that the real issue with obama and the one that they really can't handle is, is the, uh, his links uh, and his possible ties uh, uh, to the Central Intelligence Agency uh, as early on as Occidental in L.A., but uh, possibly even traveling on an Indonesian passport uh, after he reached the age of 18, going to Pakistan, going to India, traveling around on that. And that was basically confirmed to me by somebody who was very close to the uh, office of President of Indonesia, the current President of Indonesia, whose prior job, of course, was the head of the Indonesian Intelligence Service. Let's shift gears into NDAA. That's really blown up in Obama's face. The fact that he demanded the secret arrest provisions of the power to kill citizens. It's obviously unconstitutional, but he says he has that power. Now he's saying he won't enforce it and has signed this uh, executive directive to the bureaucracies, but when you have a president seeking the power to kill citizens, even in America, and then his political enemies start dying mysteriously, that pretty much convicts him right there that he was seeking this power. I mean, could we see the implementation of NDAA taking place? We saw Judge Andrew Napolitano, who was anti-war uh, and, and anti-Republican and Democratic establishment, with some of the highest ratings on Fox Business, fired. We saw the same week Buchanan fired. He said he was told, don't criticize the war. Don't criticize what Israel's doing. So I'm seeing a purge, and I've talked to high-level people in the media who've been told, leave Obama alone. Basically, uh, Rupert Murdoch is being blackmailed by the Justice Department over his crimes in England. And sure enough, we now see his son leaving England, people getting arrested. I'm not saying what they did in England was okay. It's just that I think we're seeing an internal power structure battle because they're obviously for the same global corporate fascist system, but they're fighting over who gets to control that trough. What's your take on that? Well, look, I, 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 I think this all started with Bush when we had the unitary executive basically become uh, the law of the land, that the uh, White House enjoys sovereign immunity, uh, even over the Constitution of the United States. And then uh, Obama's done nothing to give up any of those powers. As a matter of fact, he's took, taken on even more uh, powers. Uh, for example, uh, Obama is currently prosecuting at least seven people under the Espionage Act from 1917. Now, this is the law that Woodrow Wilson used to go after people who thought we shouldn't be getting into World War I uh, on behalf of the United Kingdom. And, uh, and, and it was, of course, it was, up, it was upgraded uh, uh, in um, uh, 1948 by Senator Pat McCarran. Of course, it was, uh, the McCarran Act was finally passed in 1950, uh, and that had to do with uh, uh, further establishing the national security state during the Alger Hiss investigation. So what we have are a Cold War and a World War I law being used now to stifle people in the government from reporting mis uh, wrongdoing uh, to journalists, and we still have uh, uh, the government trying to put a New York Times reporter in jail for not going before a grand jury to reveal uh, his sources, uh, Jim Risen. So uh, in, in, the, in, in this respect, Obama is worse than Bush when it comes to uh, the, this uh, whole, a frontal attack on freedom of the press in this country. Um, now, would, would they go the extra mile and start doing things to, to journalists or, or bloggers uh, or, you know, anyone else who they find is a threat? Um, I, I'm, I'm still of an open mind because I received, like I said, I received three 
credible threats that I, I took seriously. So uh, I wouldn't, I would not put it past them to do that. Um, but I, I think we have to wait before we, you know, uh, start saying anything else. Let's wait to see what the L.A. Medical Examiner's Office has to say. Sure, but again, I go back to that point that I made uh, right as you were coming on. The fact that within two hours or a little bit less of him being announced dead, they were saying natural causes, nothing to worry about, move along, move along. And any other time I've seen it, like with Gary Webb or other cases you mentioned, when they do kill yeah. somebody, they immediately announce that it was suicide or natural causes when there is foul play. I'll tell you, I was, I was almost as surprised to hear who his father-in-law was, Orson Bean, the old panelist on uh, To Tell the Truth, um, who um, I think was one of the first people who indicated that it might have been from natural causes, but uh, I, I frankly thought that Orson Bean had died years ago, so I, uh, I was almost as surprised about that in the case. I mean, it's very bizarre. And, and wasn't Orson Bean even blacklisted back during the Red Scare? Yeah, yeah he, apparently he was an aspiring actor in Hollywood. Uh, who was accused of attending Communist Party meetings. Okay, so, you know, here we go full circle, and he, he was sort of blacklisted in the 50s, so his career really had to do with appearing on, uh, you know, as a panelist on To Tell the Truth in the Match Game with, uh, you know, Bud Collier and uh, Gene Rayburn. Beyond Bizarre. Now, I yeah. always love the wild card here, because we don't do pre-interviews with you, obviously. Uh, but you did, right before we went on, mention that uh, you were at the CPAC event and you talked to Mr. Sinclair and he said he did talk to um, Andrew Breitbart. So tell us about that and then briefly, any other things you're investigating right now? Yeah, I, I spoke to Larry. Uh, no, I spoke to him at CPAC, but I talked to him this morning and uh, there was a, 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 an event called a, a Blogger's Bash at CPAC. I, I was not there, but uh, Larry was there, and he told me the next day that he had spoken to Breitbart, and Breitbart had told him about uh, wait till March the first about something. Now, in Breitbart's speech to the whole a uh, CPAC audience, uh, he said um, uh, that uh, he said something about some sort of uh, evidence uh, might have been photographs or video uh, about uh, Obama, but I. I frankly wasn't paying attention, but I did speak to some other folks who were there today, and they, they said absolutely that he did refer to that during his uh, speech. No, no, we have that clip. In, in fact, I was going to play it at the end of the interview. Do we have that uh, clip right now? Yes. Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, can we play that where he can hear it? Okay, great. Yeah, no, here's the clip. Uh, in fact, we put this out yesterday morning. We dug up where he told three different sources, yeah, I'm going to release the communist stuff on March 1st. Obama's going to really not like this. We're going to take him down. So, yes, he, he, he did indeed say and do that, uh, Wayne. Here is that clip of him at CPAC. And so what do we get now in Barack Obama? Well, I've got videos, by the way. This election, we're going to vet him. I've got videos. This election, we're going to vet him from his college days to show you why, to show you why racial division and class warfare are central to what hope and change was sold in 2008. The videos are going to come out, the narrative is going to come out that Barack Obama met a bunch of silver ponytails back in the 1980s, like Bill and Bernadine Dorn, who, equally radical, said one day we're going to have the presidency, and the rest of us slept while they plotted, and they plotted, and they plotted, and they oversaw hundreds of millions of dollars in the Annenberg Challenge, and they had real money from real capitalists. So there it is, Wayne. You were there but missed that. Yeah. But no, it, it's not a rumor. There it is. Right, right. And um, as, I, as I say,